This video is on how to use the shader editor in Blender 2.8 or Blender 2.9 to manipulate an image. This is a supplemental video to go with the video I made on creating 2D animations using Blender. That video was aimed at beginners, so I deliberately avoided using the shader editor, but the alternative was that I could only hide images, whereas this will allow you to change the brightness or do some other things with materials. So this is much more flexible. I start by creating a 2D animation. I'm going to put in a background image first because otherwise you won't be able to see the effects. I've already got the plugin for images as planes, so I'm able to use that. That was mentioned in my other video if you need to refer to that. And now I can add the image that I'm going to be using for the demonstration. So this is one that I used in the 2D image, 2D animation video that I spoke of. So first what I wanted to do is manipulate the alpha value so that you make the image go from transparent to fully opaque and various values in between. Normally that can be handled by clicking on the material properties and changing the alpha values which is here. However you'll see that this Alpha, when you import an image, refers to the image file. And the reason for this is because this has got transparency. I'm looking at the wrong image here. I was expecting a PNG file, so that's fine. So the, this PNG file has got transparency included in it. Without that alpha in there, then there would be a black background on this image. So to do this, I'm going to open the shader. So I'm going to just change this window that's down here to the shader editor. And I'm going to pull that up here. So you can see the best. And just zoom in there. So what this is showing is various things that you can do to manipulate the material. And on the left is the image input and then the shader is principled BSDF which stands for bidirectional scattering Dis distribution function. All you need to know really is that this is uh, at this level is that this is the shader and this is going to handle the merging of the colors and the alpha values and things like that. And then it goes to an output, which is here is the material output. And everything travels from left to right. So it comes out of the right hand side of the input, it goes in the left hand side of there, and then out to the right and into there. So now we can look at how the output from the image goes into the shader and becomes the material output that you see on the screen. The colour goes into base colour. Now if this was just a solid colour and not an image then that would just be one colour. But in the case of an image this is a colour representing each of the pixels and how they should be coloured. And then the alpha is the amount of transparency. So for most of the image that you can see that would have an alpha value of 1 and for the transparent background that has an alpha value of 0. We can see that by deleting this line here. If you press Control and then right mouse button drag to cut that you see the background has gone black and we can actually manipulate the alpha now using the normal alpha variable in the shader but as you see when we increase it this background is black and obviously we don't want that so we need that alpha 
to come from the image. But what this allows us to do is we need allows us to put in other boxes that will manipulate this value and give us the values we want. So what we want to do is to combine this alpha value with another value so that it hides the background but then we can vary the alpha value of the image. You do that using a converter. So you go to add converter, in this case use the math converter. If you drop it down here then you have to rewire the connections manually. But if you hover it over the line you wanted to change, that line's turned white and it's going to modify that for you. Uh, it defaults to the add, but we actually want multiply, so we just change that to multiply first. And what you can see, there's two inputs, one is from the alpha, the other one it can either be used as an input or it's got a value here, and the value is 0.5, so what it's doing is taking the alpha value from the image, multiplying it by 0.5 and then outputting it to the alpha. So if we change this value to zero, the image goes completely transparent. And if you change it to one, it becomes completely opaque. And in between, you get the, the different values. And the good thing about this is that this can be used in keyframes. So if we bring up our timeline here, we can take this value and insert a keyframe. You can see it's put in a keyframe there with a value of zero. Just to expand that, you can see the value of zero there. Move it to the position you want it to be fully visible. Change that value to one. And then insert keyframe again. And at this point, it's completely opaque. And Blender automatically creates the tweens in between the two values. So if you drag along, you can see it becoming visible. And move further along, insert a keyframe. What I wanted to do now is to make it go transparent again. And I'll show you that once this is created, you don't actually need to manipulate it in here. So we can ignore that and we can do it all on the timeline. So move to 120, we want the value there to change back to zero. And there we go. You can see it goes and as the transparency, the alpha value in multiplication value increases to one, it becomes fully opaque. And then as it decreases back to zero, it becomes fully transparent, which is what I wanted to achieve in the previous video, but to keep it simple, I just used a different technique to disable it from the render. So now I've just got rid of those keyframes and collapsed that because we don't need this anymore. I'm going to show you a couple of other techniques that can be used. And one of the features of this is that you can bring in different textures. So if we click on add and texture, you'll see there's various different kinds of textures such as bricks, checkerboard, sky, wave. So I'm going to just choose the checker texture because this is uh, quite an obvious one. It's a checkerboard or a chessboard style texture with light and dark colored squares. And we use the color output of that as the input the multiplier. So instead of having that volume manually dialed in there, we just take that from this checker texture instead. And what it's doing is creating a map of areas that are visible and areas that aren't. And it's using these values. If it's completely white, this isn't completely white, so I will just change it, then it's completely opaque. So these are the areas where it's white. If it's completely black, then it's completely transparent. And you can also change the scale of that. So let's get it up or down. You can think 
so this is like a, a chess board and that's quite a nice feature so particularly if you start looking at some of the other different textures that you can bring in and use to create different patterns of visibility. Continue that same theme but look at something perhaps a little bit more useful or a, certainly a, you've got a lot more control of it is that we can replace this with an image. So I'm just going to get rid of that one. So we've got back to our image. This is an image I've created in GIMP which is to represent bullet holes as though a machine gun has hit the plane say and it's got a white background and black bullet holes and we can pull this into the blender as an alternative to the texture so add texture and image texture and then open the image and in this case we're not going to use the alpha because there was no transparency we're going to use the color output and use that as the value instead and as you can see it's applied these bullet holes on and you can see straight through the plane so this works by the color values of the background which was white as being a one value and the black being a zero and that gets applied there and if we just render we can render the image and you can see that you can actually just see straight through and it's actually the image that's behind it that's showing through. So this tutorial has only really scratched the surface of what could be done using the shader editor. The shader editor is commonly used to apply different textures to a material or various other different transformations that you can use. Hopefully this video has been useful. The shader editor is a powerful tool and it's useful to know about it. Please give this video a thumbs up and share if you think it might be useful for others. I've also created some other videos on Blender which you may find useful. See so include some making 3D objects as well as the 2D animation video I spoke about. So you may want to take a look at those as well. Thanks for watching.